Good morning, fellow orchid lovers. It's Danielle here with an update video on how some of my new orchids are doing. I'm um, just going to share a first time bloomer with you and also uh, just some progress on some of my already established orchids. Uh, so I wanted to point out some of the spikes that came on some of the orchids that I just recently got. I showed them to you before they were in bloom. So I wanted to share the actual blooms with you. So this one, <coughs> excuse me, is the Purple Rain variation. Um, and she has two spikes, very healthy plant. She came with the spikes, but they weren't, you know, poking open yet when I first showed them to you. So I wanted to share how pretty they are. Not really uh, much of a scent on these, um, you know, no more than a usual flower scent. Like they have a slightly rose scent to them if you get in real close and sniff hard <laughs> uh, but they're beautiful so I don't really mind that she does have a second spike that's starting to get some coloration so we should be getting those to start popping open soon and I noticed after my video that the reason why this spike is so short is that it was broken um, I did not break it it came to me that way and I can't get it to focus but you can see right there so this is a shorter spike uh, but still a decent amount of flowers so I'm pretty excited about that we'll see how long her blooms last like I said she has a very um, healthy plant uh, nice big pseudobulbs nice roots so we should do well with her uh, the other plant that came with a spike is this one this is the volcano queen variation of the volcano midnight and this is the one that has like those really intensely like orangey red uh, flowers that I'm like really excited about seeing so when I got her these weren't branches yet but as as you can see she's starting to put out quite a few branches from the main spike and they're starting to get color so I think that they're gonna probably start popping open soon and the spike itself just keeps on extending so it looks like we're gonna get a pretty good show with her again another very healthy looking plant um, some of the plants that I got I had some very bad um, snail damage on uh, the Miltoniopsis, the one that I really love, the Andrea West. Uh, that one was really, the roots were really badly infected with snails. Uh, so she doesn't really have that many roots left. Um, her spikes are still present. The small one is still growing, but I don't know. She might abort them because I really did hack at her to get rid of all of those snails. So we'll see. Um, another one that ha came with a spike uh, that I wasn't sure if it was going to keep is the, um, Phalaenopsis equestrius. So I wasn't sure if she was going to keep the spike because it was like in the embryo stage when I got her, but it is growing. So the transport did not seem to affect the spike with her. Um, it's watering day. She is pretty dry. So I I'm going to give her some water today. Um, but as you can see, she's got a new root there. She's got another new root in the back, and she is continuing with the spike. So it looks like that spike is going to come to maturity as long as I can keep her happy. The other spike that I wasn't sure if it was going to make it was on the Encyclia radiata. So if you'll remember, um, she has blooms before. You can see it right there. But there was a little tiny spike that had just started try to get a good and you couldn't really see it before like you kind of had to separate the leaves it it was smaller than this but as you can see it is it is still it is growing it's not growing fast but it is growing so it doesn't look like she's going to abort it yet so again we'll see if we can keep her happy uh very generously sized plant she has three new growths uh, starting um, there's another one back there lots and lots of roots so so far so good with her now I wanted to share this orchid with you this is a first time bloomer for me and I am in love <laughs> like in love the back of the, the petals are green um, they're more green when it first opens and then they start to uh, pale out a little bit but the color on this orchid is stunning I mean, you can see, I mean, it's not coming through on the video with the saturation that I see in person, but it's still pretty amazing. The lip, I don't think I'm going to be able to get in there because focus up. 
there it is. The lip is like fuzzy. Just beautiful, beautiful orchid. But <laughs> it is not what I ordered. <laughs> so I've had this orchid for almost two years. Um, when I got her, she was pretty small. Um, she grew two leaves in my care, lots of roots in my care, but she had never bloomed before. There was no evidence of any spikes. So when she started to spike this spring, I was over the moon so excited to finally see her blooms because this is what I purchased. That's what I purchased. It's supposed to be this orchid. <laughs> This is called Joy Fairy Tale, and that's what I bought. And you can tell why, because I love spots and polka dots, and so this was this orchid was right up my alley. But that's not what bloomed. <laughs> so I mean, I'm not too upset because I do. I mean, this is gorgeous. I love this. I look at her all the time, and I'm just like, aren't you a pretty little thing? But it's not that. <laughs> so I don't know what happened. Um. I guess I could contact the seller and just be like, um, this is what bloomed for me. But honestly, they, I, they're not even showing this orchid anymore. So it's not like they could even really do anything about it. So, I mean, maybe they would give me some type of credit. I don't really know. But I, I, I am happy with the blooms. So it's not that big of a deal. If it was, you know, a flower that I already had or that I wasn't keen on, you know, I might be more inclined to say something to them. But it's not really that big of a deal to me. Um, but yeah, so that's the joys of buying a plant, waiting for it to bloom, and then it's not what you thought it was going to be. But it, it could be worse. So as you can see, it is watering day here at Danielle's Orchid Ranch. I've got my orchids all out to water. That's quite a task. It's a day-long thing. Um, but I wanted to show you... Uh, some of my other orchids. So this is the microchip that I got in my last order. Her blooms are still there. She did drop one bloom, but the other ones are staying there. And honestly, I think I'm keeping my house pretty cold. So I think that's why she's holding on to her blooms so long. I'm kind of keeping the windows open at night and it's dropping down into like the high 50s, low 60s. And um, I know that might not be 100% a good choice, but during the day, the temperatures are getting up into the 70s and even the 80s on a few days. So I feel like um, it's kind of going to balance out because the windows never really get more than like 65. And you can see how dirty my window sills are because there's so much dust and pollen in the air right now that literally I dust and I clean every day and it just doesn't do anything. I'm sure you all understand my struggle and have similar struggles. So her new growths are getting bigger. Um, she has another one. Let me see if I can find it right there that she's decided to start on. Which There we go. It's right there. So that's good. So she's going to give me, <clears throat> excuse me, four new growths this growing season so far. Uh, so I still have the blooms, so I'm enjoying those. Uh, again, they're really tiny when compared to the Atrovialacea. The Atrovialacea's blooms are much bigger and much more vivid um, with the coloration, but I still think that these are just adorable, so I'll take it. Again, the scent on these obviously is a little bit less intense than this one. This one, uh, you can smell her, you know, wherever you are in the room. This one, you kind of have to get up close and stick your nose in there to smell her. Um, yeah, so as you all know, my Atrovialacea decided to be extremely generous this year and she gave me seven spikes. So I have quite a few blooms. Uh, last year, the spikes stuck around for over three months. So hopefully this, that'll be the same, um, this year because I do, this is one of my favorite flowers. I think I just like funky looking flowers. <laughs> the more weird, the better. Uh, so I really enjoy her blooms. They're just gorgeous. I like saturation of color. I like dots. I like different stuff, like things that aren't really out of, you know, kind of normal. This is another one that's kind of like that for me. Uh, this is my dendro Dendrobium unicum. Um, this is the Dendrobium that I wasn't sure if I was going to get to bloom, um, and she did. And actually, she. I looked back in my uh, photo album. The first photo I took of this was March 27th. Of the blooms March 27th it's now the end of May <laughs> and she still has blooms and 
I mean, some of them are on the second cane, but some of them are on the first cane. So, you know, she, they lasted a long time. I, I, I'm so sorry that I cannot get this camera to cooperate today. Um, yeah, it's not, there you go. But I think that these are so cool. The veining and the curled petals are just adorable. And um, I'm glad they stuck around. They do smell uh, faintly of like orange, uh, just like a very sweet orange. Uh, someone likened it to a tangerine. It is quite a bit like a tangerine. Um, but my most exciting thing is my favorite orchid in the whole wide world is in bloom. Uh, she just opened all of her blooms like two days ago. So, um, you know, she didn't give us a whole lot. She only gave us five this time. Uh, but still, look at that. I mean, how can you not look at that and just be like, wow. The color on the lip contrasting with the brown and the stripes. I just adore this orchid. I will always have a She Love Tolkien in my collection because I just adore these blooms. And I'm super stoked because last spike, um, the new growth that I bought her with, it was a tiny little girl. I mean, it was really small when I got her. So I kind of took credit for the spike on that one. But this one is definitely 100% my spike. I grew this. <laughs> There's a pride of ownership here. <laughs> Can you sense it in my voice? I'm really happy about her. So, um, you know, I hope her blooms stick around for a while. They do usually last for several weeks for me. So she was moved out of her usual spot and put somewhere where I can see her because she's usually right up near the glass in the back of the shelf in my main bay window. And I don't want the window to get the benefit of her blooms. I want to. So she's moved in a lot closer. So that's my, my favorite, my baby. Um, and then I just wanted to share with you a few surprise spikes that I got. So um, this one decided recently that she was going to spike just out of the blue. This one is my Snow White. It's got big white blooms with a orange lip. So I'm very excited. Um, she struggled with her roots earlier, so I didn't think I was going to get a spike this year. Um, but I did. She put out a ton of new roots. She's putting out a new leaf and she's putting out a spike all at the same time. An overachiever, which it seems like quite a few of my orchids are overachievers. They seem to focus on more than one thing at once, which is odd. Um, this is my orchid um, that my niece Charlie gave me. So this I named her Charlie after my niece. And she decided she was going to spike for me too. So I'm pretty thrilled about that. I um, kind of squealed with delight when I saw that the other day. I, I took her down last week to water her and it was just poking out from between the leaves and I was um, really excited. I think it might be because of the variation in temperatures, how low the temperatures are getting at night. I'm allowing them to get pretty low. I think it's induced a few more of my fowls to spike. And then the other thing I wanted to share with you is um, something that, you know, I've never seen before. This is my orchid, Annalise. Um, I named her after my best friend's uh, daughter. Um, she has this spike here that she came with. Um, we did have blooms on her. They were those big, like hot pink blooms. And then um, it started to die back. So I cut the spike. And then uh, she decided to put a secondary spike and it hasn't stopped growing. <laughs> it just keeps growing. <laughs> I have never seen a secondary spike that long before in my life. Maybe you guys have, but I mean, I have a fair amount of uh, Phalaenopsis orchids that are blooming off of secondary spikes and none of them have ever come close uh, to this. It's gonna, I think it's gonna rival the size of the original spike if it doesn't start putting out bloom soon. Not that I'm complaining. Oh no, don't take it that way. I'm just astounded at the amount of growth on this secondary spike. So we should have quite a few blooms on here and I'm pretty excited about that. So I'll share that with you when that comes about. Uh, but yeah, so I wanted to do a video. A few of you had questions about um, dealing with Fissarium. So I wanted to do a video on that, which I will post hopefully soon. 
Um, and then also too, I was thinking of maybe doing an update video on the different types of orchids I have, taking them by, like for instance, Phalaenopsis, doing a video on my Phalaenopsis, doing a video on my Cattleyas, doing a video on my Dendrobiums, just to kind of put them into groups um, and share with you their progress and you know what's going on and what I found works uh, for my orchids in my environment. So if you're interested in seeing those videos, let me know. But I hope you're all having a wonderful week. And I will talk to you all next time.